Hi there and welcome along to another workout for you to row along to. It's day 30 of the 30 days of 30 minute workouts. Well done for getting here. It's been a good old long slog and hopefully you've had a lot of fun in the way. But today we're going out with a bang because what we're going to do is we're going to do 30 seconds on and then 30 seconds rest 30 times. And you're going to do these all at 30 strokes a minute. Well, obviously not the rest, but the effort part, you're going to do at 30 strokes per minute. And the pace wise for this, I want you to do at round about 2K pace. So before I go any further, what I'll say is that today's warm up is going to be five minutes long rather than four, just to make sure you've got that little bit more of a zing in your legs to make sure you're nice and warm for today's row. Okay. So anyway, today's session then is all about the 30s because it's the 30th day of the 30th, <laughs> the 30th workout of this whole 30 thing. It's all 30s. So these 30 second efforts are really going to be up there. And I mean, like I said, at the end of day 29, for me, this is relatively uncharted territory. I think I've done 20 of these before, but never up to 30. So it'll be interesting to see whether there's any kind of fade in pace as I go um, through all of these 30 and of course the same for you are you able to start off at 2k pace and then hold it there to the end or do you get to a point maybe halfway through where you start to struggle but then as you see the end of the row you get that second wind and you're able to uh, increase your pace back up to 2k pace or even faster if you can all right so it's interesting for all of us to see how we go with this one it's a great session to do anyway but it's also kind of a little bit of a oh what's going to happen here okay so let's get into our five minute warm-up um and we're going to set up the same way we always do. So go to the front of your machine on a Concept2 and set up your drag factor to where you want it to be. Now, if you don't know about drag factor, please check out the video I have on this channel. If you're on a non-Concept2, then that's totally cool. But you'll have to set your resistance or whatever you have on your machine to make sure that you get a good enough of a kind of a weight from the stroke as you drive with the legs so you can then pull and swing over your or swing over your back and then pull at the back of the stroke rather than having to heave from the front next up go to your monitor and if you're able to then set it at eye height rather than down low or up high both of which can kind of ruin your posture a little bit and then finally if you're able to set the heights of your foot straps the foot stretchers then please set them to a point where you're able to get your shins to a vertical position as you come forwards okay that's really important if you set them too high, then you can kind of get a little bit bound up and not quite get there. If you set them too low, you can go shooting straight past. You can hyperextend and cause power leaks and things, all right? Okay, so this five minute warm up, we're still gonna start in the same way. We're gonna do it um, with enough of a force from your feet that you can think about the connection into your hands at 18 strokes a minute. Um, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna gradually increase the pace Get a little bit faster a little bit faster and then what we'll do is we'll then still go back into those single legs and uh, the arms only back only part of the warm-up okay right so let's get into this then let's do 18 strokes a minute in three two one let's go so you've heard me say this many many times we're going to go through it again the power generation from the stroke comes from your feet pushing into the foot plates, okay? So you push your feet, good old shove from your legs, and that's where most of the power from your stroke comes from. However, you need to get that power into your hands to then connect the handle to the machine. And so you partly do that by making sure to push your feet into the foot plates at the same time that your hands connect to the handle but also with body position where you have a forward lean into the front of the machine with straight arms and that lets the power connect to the handle and really surge into it that power from your legs flows into the machine and that's really important today if you want to make sure to hit your pace through all 30 of the splits in today's row where to just get that power in from your legs surge it into the machine it'll help with your muscle fitness as well as your cardio fitness Right, so what we'll do 
as we'll gradually increase pace. Make sure you get close to 2K plus 20 by now. More of a push from the legs to get your pace up. And then over the next minute, let's try and get up to 2K plus 15, but still at 18 strokes a minute. So more of a push from your legs. And if you don't know what I keep on saying with this 2K pace thing, then it's based around rowing a two kilometer time trial and dividing the resulting time by four to give you your average time to cover 500 meters. And that is your 2K training pace. So an eight minute 2K would give you a training pace of two minutes. And when I say 2K plus 20, you go 20 seconds slower. Right, one more here. Let's put one foot on the ground. Then you just get a chance to ease off the amount of power you're putting in as you roll with just one leg strapped into the machine. Hopefully that minute of adding in lots of power from your legs will really have helped you warm up your muscles, swap feet, and then these drills, the single leg drill, and the ones that are about to come up are about improving your flexibility a little bit, ready for the main session. Okay, three more here, two more. Okay, so put both feet in, legs straight, and roll with your back and arms. So keep your legs straight and just swing over your back and pull in your arms. And then out with the arms, swing over the back. This is such an important phase of the stroke to, to develop and get it right, that swing over your back to add in power. Right, let's roll to the front with straight arms, forward lean, and just press out from the front. Not too powerfully, probably the same amount of foot press you started off with, because all I want you to do is concentrate on holding this forward lean and straight arms as you push out the front. Just get used to being in this position for about half of your leg drive. Should we do one more? One more. Right, that is the, well, that's my warm up done. If you feel you're not warm, up, warm enough yet, and there's a potential you might strain something, then please keep on warming up. Hopefully I've flanneled enough that you've had time to program this into your monitor if you're continuing to do your warm up. If not, then you might have to quickly pause the video and, and set up a 30 minute row with one minute splits if that's what you want to do, because we're about to get into it. Okay, we all ready? Remember in the 30 second rests, you can just, like, I'm just gonna completely stop um, and so you get a chance to have a drink and stuff within those 30 seconds. Um, okay, so remember, technique wise, this is all about pushing from the legs and we're going straight off. There's no lead in here, we're going straight into it, okay? Here we go then, in three, two, one. Let's go. <clears throat> now remember, 30 strokes a minute. So that means a big, push from the legs and you're rowing one stroke every two seconds make sure to really get that force in there three two one okay I think it was about 29 for a crawl like that so that's what we're doing, 30 times. Your heart rate will be up a bit, but you shouldn't feel too exhausted yet. <laughs> if you wanna do rolling starts, which means light rowing, then start it from now, and this just gets the flywheel moving so that first stroke isn't from a dead, stopped, heavy flywheel, okay? 
Okay, two, one, go. <sighs> Sorry, I missed the countdown. I was too busy talking about rolling starts. Now, if you can't get up to 30 strokes a minute, remember, getting the handle away nice and smooth and rhythmically stop really helps get the handle in and away at the same pace you pulled it in at I'll talk about that again in the next one 15 seconds 10 seconds okay so start your light rowing if you wish 5 4 3 two, one, go. So the pace you pull the handle into your chest at, at the back of the stroke, you want to send the handle right back out at the same speed. A nice fluid rhythm. Three, two, one how's it going for you so far I seem to be blowing through my 2k pace I'm about 2k minus 2 right now I may pay for that later we'll see ok 10 seconds to go you should wiggle your backside 5 4 3 2 one, go. <clears throat> Remember, I always talk about power as coming from the legs. So when you need to get back up to pace, you push with the legs. Three, two, one and as long as you have that forward lean and arm straight then that bigger push from the legs puts more power into the machine Ooh, my backside's getting a bit sore today 10 seconds to go that's why I'm wriggling all over the place 6 5 4 3 2 one, go. I suppose that's a good sign because it's showing that I'm really pushing with my legs. If my glutes are starting to get that used feeling. Two one Ooh. so I find just sitting slightly forwards on the front of the seat to ease the pressure off your glutes and then just pick up your backside to reseat your seat so your sit bones aren't crushing your glutes 10 seconds to go 5 4 3 2 one, go, and keep your arms nice and relaxed as you come forwards to let that power flow through them and don't fight against it with your muscles too one it is really tempting to think especially when you want to go fast about grabbing early and using your big muscles in your arms but trust me keep your arms straight use your big muscles at the back of the stroke 10 seconds Whew. 5 4 3 
two, one, go. Because you really want to be push, pull, push, pull, push, pull. Okay, so you're only thinking about the pull at the back. Push, pull. Legs first. Push, pull. Two. One. This 30-day series, the story really has been about making sure to get that hang off the handle. Pushing with the legs, being forward and getting that hang off the handle. And that's vital for getting the power in there. 10 seconds to go. Five, four, three, two, one, go. Now, if you start to feel any kind of strain on your back, and you're currently starting from a stopped flywheel, then do start that light rowing for rolling starts with 10 seconds to go. I'll show you this time what I mean. Just because the weight of that stopped flywheel can be a little bit of a jolt through your back. So I'll show you what I mean, just so you know. A bit late for this, but hey, why not? Okay, so 10 seconds to go, just light rowing. Just so I get the timing right. Okay, so flywheel's moving. One, go. I could probably have taken one more stroke there, to be honest. But it was still moving enough to not be a completely stopped flywheel. Four, three, two, one. I mean, it's important to learn how to start from a stopped flywheel, but not so important that you want to risk injury. Whew. So in a session like this, if it starts to hurt, it starts on light rowing. Let's try and get it right this time, okay? 10 seconds to go. Two more strokes like this. Three, two, one. Let's go. I think I got my timing about one second out there. But again, the beauty of just having this as a 30 minute row means that you can be a second out and it doesn't really matter. One more because you can then just make it up through this rest period. Ooh. All right, so that's 10 done, I believe. 10 minutes gone, third of the way there. Apart from my glutes being a bit tender from all this pushing, 10 seconds to go. It's not too bad so far. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Go. And do try to keep your technique from breaking down as we go through this. Could be that muscles start to tire or even you just get distracted. Three, two, one. So do think about that tilt forwards and backwards over your hips. You're just swinging forwards and backwards rather than rounding off your lower back. 10 seconds to go if you want to do rolling starts. Five, four, three, 
two, one, go. So forwards, backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards. See the amount of time I'm in a backwards position is a lot shorter than the amount of time I'm in a forwards position. Three, two, one. Oh, you want to get into that forward lean again. Nice and quick after the finish. Hands away, rock over your hips. It can be harder to gauge when you're rowing at this stroke rate, but it's worth thinking about it. 10 seconds to go. Six, five, four, three, two, one, go. So hands, hands, body, legs, hands, body, legs, hands, body, legs. Well, yeah, I can't even get the sequencing out in words before I'm actually completed. That's because basically we're doing one second at either end. Stop. At this stroke rate, it is more like a one-to-one -one ratio of drive to recovery. Whereas like 20 strokes a minute is like twice as fast drive and then twice as slow recovery. Here it's basically a second either way. 10 seconds to go. Five, four, three, two, one, go. But don't forget about posture. I'm talking a lot here about arms and legs and even that swing over your hips. It can be interesting to look at your pace, last one. The difference between kind of being in a little bit slumped and then making sure to rise up, so it's kind of slumped at the back or powerful. The difference between that and that in terms of posture can mean seconds, good few seconds in your pace. 10 seconds to go. Six. Five, four, three, two, one, go. And essentially, you want to be up on your sit bones in that forward lean at the front of the stroke, but even at the back of the stroke, you should feel your sit bones are still what's connected to the machine. One more. Or at least the seat, maybe not the machine. Makes it sound like I'm rubbing my backside against the flywheel, twerking against it. <laughs> All right, we're halfway there. Bon Jovi point. Okay, so it's back downhill, last 15 to go. <laughs> 10 seconds. Whew. Here we go then, in six, five, four, three, two, one, push. <clears throat> now, I'm still maintaining at least 2K minus two through these. So I'm gonna make a deal with myself to make sure to not go any slower by the end. One more. So I'm aiming for a 145 pace, and that was pretty much all I saw then was 142, 143, apart from the first like two strokes. And so that's what I mean, just look at your monitor and each stroke, 10 seconds to go. Six, five, four, three, 
two, one, push. Because data after the matter is all very interesting, but actually it's right here and right now that makes the difference. Three, two, one. Especially as we're in that middle chunk of this row. This is when, like I say, sometimes concentration or fatigue can lead to you drifting away from your pace. So if you keep an eye on how fast you're going stroke by stroke, 10 seconds to go and adjust as necessary, then that's much better. Five, four, three, two, one, go. It's all very good. Coming back after a row, looking at your data and realizing you should have been going faster through these sections, but it's a bit too late then. So look at your monitor and make sure, last stroke, make sure you're hitting your pace now. Because otherwise I'm gonna make you come back and do the whole session again. <laughs> of course I'm not, how am I gonna do that? Gonna come round to your house? No, I don't do home visits, not yet anyway. 10 seconds to go. Still waiting for that billionaire, I'll do a home visit for them. Five, four, three, two, one, go. I just do remember your power. If you're starting to lose concentration, just think about that push of the legs with straight arms. That's all you need to concentrate on. One more. And if you can concentrate on it, you'll be surprised. I mean, I jumped up two seconds in pace then just from talking to you about it and then me concentrating more on doing it. So it does work. 10 seconds to go. Get ready for the 20th. One, and five, four, three, two, one, go. <sighs> now, I, at this stage, start to lose that, or start to get that bad habit of over-leaning at the front. So I'm just concentrating on just one o'clock, hang on, two, one. One o'clock at the front, 11 at the back. I'm trying not to dip further forwards at the front in the hopes of more length. Right, 10 intervals to go. If you think you can go even faster, start going even faster. 10 seconds to go. I might try, let's see. Five, four, three, two, one, go. <clears throat> Same stroke rate, but more power from your legs. Push harder into the machine and you will feel, if you get it right, that you are hanging harder off the handle last one <sighs> yeah so that was mostly 2k minus 5 140s 139 140 make sure to drink oh. 10 seconds <sighs> 6 Five, four, three, 
two, one. Come on. <coughs> Try and at least <coughs> hit the same pace you just managed. <coughs> you can have another jump <coughs> in a few more intervals time, but don't blow your energy yet if you feel you're on the edge. Stop. Obviously, if you feel this is a walk in the park, I'm hoping you'll be going a lot faster by now anyway. But if this is just pushing you to the top of the curve, wait until maybe five to go before doing another speed increase. 10 seconds to go. Six, five, four, three, two, one, go. <clears throat> oh, certainly my starting stroke is starting to get a little bit labored. I can put in the power from now when the flywheel's moving, but my first one is tough. Two, one, and I can feel myself overreaching on that one. So I'm definitely, fatigue is setting in now that I've tried to really up the pace, but it was still mostly 140s, so it's good, I suppose. <laughs> All right. That's 10 seconds to go. Maybe start doing moving flywheels. Five, four, three, two, one, go. That also, that connection of your hands to the handle should be with your fingers hooked over the handle. You're not choking it to death in a death grip. Last one. Nice, just hooked thumbs underneath. Maybe if you move them forward, they would lightly touch your index finger, but I prefer like this with them kind of down. And that keeps the power straight through your arms into your hands and into the handle. 10 seconds to go. Five, four, three, two, one, go. And that's why you have relaxed arms and shoulders is so that the power just surges in a straight line to your fingers to then surge against the handle. Last one. 25 done, five to go. So if you want to increase the pace for the next five, let's go for it. You don't have to. If you're on the ragged edge, hold your pace. Okay, 10 seconds to go. Five, four, three, two, one, go. It's a really increase that push. You should hear the tone of your machine change as you push in more power two one so the especially on the concept two the pitch of your flywheel will increase as you put in more power Woo. Right, 10 seconds to go. We've only got four more. Five, four, three, 
two, one, push. So keep a good posture, arms straight, and then only pull on the handle at the end. Again, you're not trying to get pace by pulling early. Last one. You'll fight against the pace if you grab from the front. Let your legs do the work at the front and hang off the handle to pull at the back. Okay, 10. Six, five, four, three, two, one, go. So remember, push, pull, push, pull, push, pull, push, pull. And if you put your swing over your back in the middle of that too, your pace will hopefully be as efficient and fast last one as possible two to go so we try max effort for these last two I'm pretty much close to that anyway to be honest 2k minus 7 12 10 ok in 6 Five, four, three, two, one, go. So, max push from your legs. Really push that machine away from you. Push it through the wall. Three. Two, one, Ooh. 135, 2k minus 10 for me, how do you get on? 20 seconds to go until the last one, Ooh. right, in 10, six, oh wait, five, Four, three, two, one, go. <coughs> Come on. <coughs> Make this your fastest yet. <coughs> Come on. <coughs> Six, five, four, three. Two, one. Oops. You can tell when I get a bit tired because I stop counting <laughs> or start counting. Now, looking at the timer, what we should have done was started today's session with 30 seconds gentle so that we'd have finished. But, ah, it's always a chance that you've just been doing some light rowing to a finish rather than letting the handle slip out your hands and, and slump forwards like me. Ah, right, okay, so as we know, there's that 30 second rest <laughs> at the end of that workout. I'm gonna hope that you are okay to get into a two minute cool down and then some stretching. So if you haven't already, please have a quick drink, uh, wiggle your backside to make sure you're nice and comfortable and then we'll get into this two minute cool down. Whew, another 30 seconds certainly helped me. This time I didn't throw them the, the handle towards the machine. When I was done. Okay, so we're gonna do this at run about 20 strokes a minute again, basically run about that warm-up pace, okay, and just slow down as you get to through this two minutes. So here we go then in three, two, one, let's go. For the last time in the 30 days of 30-minute 30 rows, 
we shall cool down. Oh. Whew. So whether you've done the entire series, whether you've just done a few of the rows, maybe this is the first and only one you've done so far, then I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope if you have only done the odd one or two um, that you're like, oh, I wonder what the rest of the series is like. And you'll have noticed, hopefully, that they're colour-coded for their intensity. So this one is a max top tier row. So the thumbnail is red. <laughs> Can't believe I'm telling you this on the very last day. <laughs> um, the low intensity ones are green and the middle, medium, mid intensity ones, they're the orange ones. Uh, so if you are wanting to pick something else to do, then you've got that color code. I used to do a thing with chilies where I'd put on the, my little cartoon chili guys to let you know what kind of a row it was. I think I need to bring them back because I think it's an easy way to know what it is. I mean, not that I want to go through a YouTube crisis with you, but the thumbnail thing's really tricky to try and work out what to put on there. I don't want to put on so much stuff that it's baffling, confusing, and it scares people off. But at the same time, I don't want to make it so sparse that you have no idea what the row is. But then I kind of want you to read the description anyway, so you know what the pacing is. So I don't know. Answers on the postcard. Last one. Ugh. There we go. All finished for the cool down. So you can carry on cooling down if you wish, or you can join me for some stretching, or if you don't have time to join me for some stretching, then please at least take a moment to stretch those quads, hamstrings and glutes. Okay, it's really important that you show some care and attention to, you, to your muscles after a roll like that. Or if you do have the time, you can join Stretchy John. He'll take you through some guided stretching if you have a space uh, and some stretching mat and stuff that you can just go and do some stretching. Or if you don't have that space, but you can still sit in your machine, I will take you through stretching on the machine. So put your legs back into the foot plates, but keep the straps loose so you can brace your toes against them and create a nice angle between your feet and your legs. Get those legs nice and straight. Make sure your backside is comfortably on the seat. Hands in the air and fold forwards. And as you go through that fold, you should feel that zing, that kind of stretching burn increase as you go through the fold, okay? And remember, you're not holding onto your ankles and pulling yourself forwards. You're not holding onto your toes and pulling yourself forwards. You're letting that fold forwards of your body be, especially on a rowing machine that there is a very slight downward angle anyway, then it should help that. And you're, you're letting this be the, what causes that kind of tension of the, 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 I don't say strain, but I guess that's kind of it. It's the, the pull that then um, creates that hamstring stretch. Okay, so make sure you get it in the hamstrings is all I'm saying. Let's move on to glutes next. One leg up on the rail, bring your other foot over so that your heel is tucked into the crook of your knee. Bring that knee across your body so that you have a straight line between your face, that knee and your foot. And then hold it in position with one arm, hold on to the back of the machine and then just rotate around down into that glute. You don't have to hold on to the back of the machine, but it just does help from a stability point of view. Just to kind of anchor yourself there with that rotation as well. Because if you don't, you're kind of left. And what you don't really want to be doing is being unstable and kind of wobbling around because you're trying to get that focus down into the glute. And if you're suddenly moving backwards and forwards, you're kind of, you're, it's almost like as you do that rotation round, the seat's going to move or your body's going to move against that force that you're trying to put into the glute. So this is why I like to anchor myself into the back of the machine. Oh, why is my t-shirt so dirty? <laughs> what was I doing? Okay, let's just swap legs. <clears throat> Do exactly the same thing. Try and use that, because it, ultimately it's the, that knee coming across your body that is what's causing the stretch down into your glute. And then that rotation round kind of helps the, the, the way that leg comes across your body. So, um, really do focus on keeping that knee in that straight line between face, knee and foot in order to get that stretch into your glute. Because, I mean, it's a really good idea to stretch your glutes. They're so in control of so many things. This is why I say quads, hamstrings and glutes. So they're kind of the three that you should focus on 
post row if you don't get a chance to stretch. Right, let's do quads next. So uh, rest a hand on the monitor if you need stability, like I most obviously do, because I'm always falling over. And then flick your opposite foot up behind you, hold your heel into your backside, um, and then add just that little bit of a pull onto your foot so that you feel that stretch coming in through your quad, okay? Remember, it's your quad that gets it, not up here, not up in your hip flexor, certainly not your knees. If you, if you feel your knees straining against this, then uh, you've got something wrong with your body position, your, your leg position and things. So um, yeah, I'll turn to the side for this one so you can see, Let's hopefully you won't fall over. It'd be bad if I fell into the rowing machine. But here you go, that's what I mean. So posture wise, you want a good posture down between your shoulder, your hip and your knee. Um, and then holding onto the upper part of your foot rather than down your toes to as you pull against your knee and kind of create that tension which then uh, makes sure that that quad muscle there is getting stretched rather than the hip flexor up here. So let me pick more dirt off my t-shirt. <laughs> because we're going to do hip flexors next. So put one knee on the ground. Remember you can do this with one knee off the ground um, and stretch into your hip flexor this way just because sinking it down but just i prefer to do it because i have space here to on, on the ground so just be mindful of that so one knee on the ground your foot behind uh, should be toes on the ground heel up in the air front foot is on the ground in front of you obviously because it's a front foot with a knee directly above it should have 90 degree angles on both sides and then just sink down because basically you push that hip forwards keeping a good posture and you'll feel your body sink down as you do so. And then that creates this stretch through your hip flexor. And it'll, it'll go down into your quad a little bit too. I can feel all the way down to here is stretching, but really primarily it's up here in my hip flexor that's uh, getting a really nice stretch from doing this. Your front leg should just be here for stability. If, you're, if you suddenly feel like you're doing like a, a huge lunge into that front leg, then maybe move that legs slightly, that foot slightly forwards, and that'll reduce the pressure on it. Let's swap over legs. So same thing again, get that 90 degree angle on both sides, and then just push that hip forwards until you feel a stretch. Now, I can definitely tell that in the, over the course even of these 30 days of doing this every single day and stretching this way really, every single day that my hip flexors are opening up more. I'm having to sink deeper and deeper each time in order to get that stretch to the hip flexors. Whether this is a, is a byproduct of all the stretching and the rowing or whether it's because of the um, high rocks training I'm doing giving me slightly bigger muscles. Um, I'm not saying huge muscles, but I can definitely tell. I can definitely tell from the fact that I'm unable to fit, fit my legs into my 501s right now that something's, something's changed when it comes to my thighs. Hopefully it's not fat, <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, something's definitely, because it's quite hard to get them on. In many ways, I'm like, hey, it's quite hard to put them on, but it's also, it's like, crikey, 501s are quite expensive jeans to not be able to fit into. So, and they're finer in the waist before you, before you start, and, okay? <laughs> so let's do shoulders next. Hand straight out in front of you, bring, it, bring your arm across your body, you loop your other arm across that, just to add, and then pull against it slightly, just to create just enough tension to stretch up into that shoulder. You're not trying to rip it, you're not trying to kind of and pop it out of the, the socket by pulling too hard. You're just putting enough. And again, if you try and keep your torso straight forwards as you do that, because um, if you if you just keep on turning around against that uh, force of the arm, you're not going to get the stretch you're looking for. Okay, so if you bring it and just go, <laughs> that's going to do nothing. So you need to kind of keep your torso forwards and then bring your, um, could just put that kind of light pull of your arm against it so that just stretches out your shoulder and you should then feel it okay so it's more like that and then it's fine um that's all i need is just i'm kind of i don't know what would that be i guess about 30 degrees maybe 35 degrees backwards is all I'm doing. So it's really not huge, the amount of a stretch I'm doing, and it's just enough to really get it in there. As your forearms next, so hands in front of your face, push them together, and then bring them down in front of your body, um, and carry on pushing them together. Uh, and try and keep them, uh, rather than in front of you pointing away, we're not, whoosh, we're not doing breaststroke. Um, try and keep them directly up, okay? So you've got your wrists and forearms are parallel to the ground, and your fingers are then uh, perpendicular, right angles. <laughs> Basically, your fingers are pointing straight up. <laughs> uh, the easiest way to say that. Perpendicular is right, isn't it? Yeah. 
oh, good grief. Because parallel would be like that, perpendiculars like that. Oh, good grief. Every day's a school day. Hey, hey, learn stuff. Tell you what I'll teach you today. Do you know what I learned? It's the opposite of irony. I kind of thought, ah, oh, this is interesting. Type 10, what is the opposite of irony? Do you want to know what the opposite of irony is? Wrinkly. <laughs> There's a dad joke for you, just to end. See, <laughs> right at the end, I scare you off. <sighs> Wrinkly. I actually got taken in by that. It was a thing, it was on Amazon's Alexa thing. It's like, what's the opposite of irony? I'm like, oh, wait, it's the opposite of irony. And I come up wrinkly and I was like, anyway. Biceps next, hands behind you. Uh, as though you're flying. Hey, look, Ma, I can fly. But then rotate your thumbs outwards. Look, Ma, I'm crashing. Um, yeah, and that straight, that lengthens the long head of your bicep. And if you have a good posture, um, and just, you can use this to kind of open up your chest as well. The difference between me just doing this, still get the bicep stretch, but then just bringing them slightly further out and back. Then suddenly my kind of my upper chest, my pecs get in on the action as well. Um, downside is, is that I am now contracting my triceps and I can kind of feel my shoulders are squeezing together. So you never know, this might be one that you do and then you do the shoulders one. Again, listen to your own body. But because it does the contracting of the triceps, I finish with the triceps. So uh, put your hand up in the air and then swing it down so it touches your spine. Your elbow will be pointing slightly up but not vertically up or straight up. So use your other arm to just help it up and that should then create the stretch that you're looking for into your triceps. And you can lean your body to one side if you want to try and increase the, the amount of muscles you're stretching. That should get your lats as well. Possibly opens up your intercostals slightly as well, but I, I kind of, I'm not really into compound stretching. I think it's uh, best to focus on one muscle at a time because the, the, by the time you start mixing in loads of different muscles, there's a chance you'd get one of them wrong and it cramps up or, or it just niggles or something. So. Um, I'd rather find an individual intercostal stretch or do some myofascial massage. <laughs> Look at me, myofascial. Um, yeah, I'd rather do that kind of stuff rather than just try and find one stretch that does everything. Although actually from a tying point of view, if I could find <laughs> one all over body stretch, probably be like um, uh, hanging from a pull up bar with 50 kilograms of weights tied to my legs. I'd probably, <laughs> probably do it. Uh, yeah, I don't know my luck. I'd do it like over a swimming pool and sink to the bottom and blah. Anyway, at least that would prove I wasn't a witch. So anyway, right. Um, so that's it. We're all done. Done with stretching. Done with the 30 days of 30 minute workouts. I do hope if you were along for the whole ride that you enjoyed it. Um, it's Listen, it's a great way to fit in a whole series of 30 minute workouts. Whether you do it within 30 days, whether you spread it over 60, it's up to you. Whether you use it for the Concept 2 holiday challenge, whether you just think, you know what, I want to, yeah, pfft do something different that isn't performance-based. Because I mean, to be honest, this is one of the good things about this, is there's no there's no goal to this. It's just about getting through a bunch of 30-minute workouts. So when you do a 2K plan, there is that performance base to it where you're thinking, I'm trying to improve my 2K time, and you're always kind of th looking ahead to at the end of this, I'm going to have to do another 2K. So there's that element of, oh, it's going to happen. Whereas this is just about knocking out a whole bunch of 30-minute rows. That will, it then hopefully have improved your fitness and your performance and your strength and and all that stuff to then be able to get into some kind of a plan. So hopefully this has been a good foundation series is all I'm saying. Um, I have a lot of fun with it. This is why I've done it for two years in a row now. Um, I'll likely do it again in 2023. Um, it depends what works like to be honest. I mean, this has been quite a, quite arduous this time around because I've been, uh, because I've had to really fit it around being in an edit suite this time rather than just being at home and working from home. But hey, that's my little violin story. So um, you don't need to know about that. But because I, I enjoy making them, that's the whole point. Uh, even though it's late right now and I'm making this one, I still love making them. So um, if I didn't enjoy making them, I'd stop making them. If you guys didn't watch them, I'd stop making them. But the fact is, you watch them, I enjoy making them, so they keep on coming. That's the end of that rant. All right, so I really do want to say thank you for joining me for the, the 30 days to 30 minute rows. Whether, like I said, whether you've just done one, whether you've done five, 10, 15, or all 30, um, I hope you enjoyed whatever ones you did. Um, remember, this channel has got hundreds of different workouts. Literally, there's over 400 different workouts that you can do up here, I think. At last counting, anyway, there's 400 different workouts that you can uh, do on this channel. So do take a look around, either at the plans or the one-off rows or these collections, or you can, from tomorrow, start doing the 12 rows of Christmas, okay? Where 12 days, different rows, it's like 12 sprints are coming and all that kind of stuff uh, that I do. So um, if you're just looking for another series to continue and you've just enjoyed the sound of my voice so much, 
um, then you can just go into that one, okay? Um, so I, it, no matter what you do, I hope you find something on my channel and you hang around. Do get in touch and let me know if you're enjoying it and say hello. I do um, the uh, YouTube comments. I'm getting a little bit uh, about replying to them because there's just so many coming, which is lovely. Um, but uh, if you're on the Facebook group, you can message me through Messenger or you can email me at info at rollong.com. And if you message me or email me, I promise you I reply. It's the YouTube comments that have slipped away, I'm afraid. So, um, But that's not to say don't comment. I mean, please comment and say you enjoyed it and stuff. That's how other people know that these videos work and that they're good sessions to roll along to. So this is, if ever, uh, I, I, I don't say it often, but if ever I was to say, hey, if you want to try and do something to support roll along, then just seriously leave a comment. And act, and as, as awful as it sounds to be saying this, do click the like button because then people go, oh, look, ah, and they subscribe and they go, oh, look, all these people subscribe. There's a, there, there is still value to that from people going, people like his channel. So if you want to, I'd, I'd ask for nothing from a money point of view. So if you do want to give me any kind of a payback on this, then just seriously do that. But I'm saying at the end rather than the beginning, because there's nothing worse than loading up a video and then they stop it after three minutes and go, hey, smash that like button and hit subscribe. And really, I mean, oh man, I'd, I'd turn off at that point, but I've got you through this whole row first and now I'm saying it. So hopefully you're not turning off. This has become a massive outro, so I'm going to say goodbye. The last thing to say is uh, a hashtag just to prove you made it this far. And we're just going to go for 30 all done. Okay, because that's it. We're 30 minutes all done. Right, so 30, 3, 0, all done. There we go. So thank you once again for uh, letting me be part of your rowing life. I will hopefully see you in another video. Until then, take care, be well, bye-bye.